Okay. So you have in between your atria and your ventricles, and in between your ventricles and your main vessels leading away from your heart, you have these things called valves. Okay. Valves are structures in your heart that that only allow blood to flow one way through your heart. Okay. So blood only travels one way through your heart because of these valves. Um, and that's actually a really, really good thing. Uh, you need to have these valves in order for your heart to work effectively. Okay, because um, remember the atria's job is to pump the blood into the ventricle and then the ventricle pumps the blood out. If you did not have a valve in between your atria and your ventricle, right, your atria would contract, squirt, squirt the blood into your ventricle, and your ventricle would contract and squirt the blood back into the atria. Right, and it just like go back and forth inside your heart, and it would never get anywhere. Um, and that would be a problem, right? So you need to have these valves in between that only allow blood to go through, okay, one way, and they don't prevent it, or they don't prevent it. They do prevent it from coming back the other way, okay? Um, and so you've got four valves in your heart. The two that are between your your atria and your ventricles are called your atrioventricular valves. It's hard to remember, okay? Atrioventricular valve. Um, the right one is called your tricuspid valve, and the left one is called the bicuspid or mitral valve, okay? And those are these things that you can see right here um, in, on this little model right here. They're open currently, but that's like all of this stuff right here. That's the valve, okay? Um, these atrioventricular valves are kind of special. They've got these little stringy things. You see those? Okay. Those are called chordae tendinae. Um, those are th what we call the heartstrings. Have you ever heard of the heartstrings? Like, oh, you're tugging on my heartstrings kind of, kind of expression. The chordae tendinae are literally your heartstrings. Okay. And your chordae tendinae are responsible for um, connecting this valve to these little muscles here. You actually have special muscles in your heart that are for the valve. Okay. Um, and the way that these work is there's, there's like pieces of connected tissue that come together and they, they kind of look like little ears. They're like little pieces of little ears. Okay, so kind of like this. So if this is, okay, it would look something like this, this trimester cell. Okay, um, if it was closed. So it's got like kind of like rectangularish pieces. Um, and these cells project into the ventricles. So they go like this. Okay, so the, the kind of like tips of the ears face into the ventricle, okay? So when your atria contract, okay, they build up pressure. So when you take um, at this muscle in the atria and it contracts, it's building up pressure inside of this atria. You can think of it like a balloon full of water, right? If you squeeze on that water, okay, in that, or on that balloon, the water inside of it, you're going to increase the pressure inside of there, right? until eventually, if you increase it enough, it pops and the water comes out, yes? Okay, so same kind of concept. Uh, the atria contracts, builds up pressure. When enough pressure is built up, this valve okay, opens, okay, and it allows blood to flow through into the ventricle, okay? Um, and these little muscles that attach this little um, valve to the heart wall itself are relaxed. Okay, so they relax, the valve opens, blood comes into your ventricle. Now it's your ventricle's turn to contract. Contract, builds up pressure. As it builds up pressure, um, these muscles contract and these little flaps close. Okay, and so it builds up pressure, these valves close, and the valve that separates this ventricle from your pulmonary trunk um, opens. Okay, so blood flows out this way and does not go back into your atria. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and you've also got another one of the same valves okay, in between your right atria or left atria and left ventricle and another valve in between your aorta and your left ventricle. Yes, do you see that? The four valves, two between your um, atrium ventricle and uh, two in between the two main arteries that come off of your you good? Okay. Um, the ones that are uh, separate the ventricles from 
your aorta and from your pulmonary trunker called the semilunar valve, um, the one that separates your uh, right ventricle from your pulmonary trunk is called the pulmonary valve. And the one that <laughs> separates your left ventricle from your aorta is called your aortic valve. Okay, easy terms to remember. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that's not true. <laughs> hopefully you will. Um, okay. Uh, so basically, that's how they're working. The, these guys, so the ones that separate your ventricle from your pulmonary trunk and your aorta, um, after the ventricle contracts and squirts the blood out into either the pulmonary trunk or the aorta, um, once it starts to relax, blood would tend to flow back this way, back into the ventricle, um, because this is, you know, going against gravity, right? So once this relaxes and the pressure decreases, this would tend to flow back this way. So these valves um, block the blood from coming back into the ventricle. So they actually face like into the veins or arteries, not veins, arteries. Um, and so they open when the ventricle contracts, and then when the ventricle relaxes, they close to prevent blood flow from going back into your heart. All right, make sense? Okay. Um, so here's a better picture than a, I can draw or you know make with hand motions. Okay. Um, so this is your bicuspid valve. Okay. So when your right atria or goodness gracious left atria contracts, um, it this valve opens. Okay, so your papillary muscles relax, the chordae tendineae relax, and blood flows through into your left ventricle. Okay, um, when the ventricle contracts, okay, these papillary muscles contract, these are tight, and this valve closes, preventing blood from going back the other way. Kind of cool, huh? What do you think goes up when it closes? So, um, yeah, so because this this is your ventricle, right? So this is your ventricle, and this is contracting and squeezing and moving this way and pushing the blood, uh, like increasing the pressure on your blood. Um, and this is the uh, atria, okay, the atrium up here. And you don't want blood to go back up into here. You want it to go out through the aorta, right? So you want it to close. And so when this pressure increases, okay, um, it causes these two uh, like little cusps to come together and to close and prevent the blood from coming back up through. Yeah, that would be like this one right here. There's two. There's one right here between your right or left atria and left ventricle, and then one right here between your uh, left. Oh my gosh, right atria and right ventricle. Yeah, not that tough. So. <laughs> okay, left atria, left ventricle, right atria, right ventricle. There's valves in between there, and then there's also valves in between your pulmonary trunk and your aorta. Okay. All right. Um, this is a picture. If you took your heart and you were to kind of like cut everything away and just look at the valve. Right, so kind of cut it across like right about here and look at the valve. Um, your atria and your ventricles, they contract separately. Um, but both your atria contract at the same time and both your ventricles contract at the same time. So atria contract first, squirt the blood into the ventricles, and the ventricles contract, squirt the blood out, either through the pulmonary trunk or the aorta. So it's like that kind of motion. Does that make sense? So when your atria are contracting, your right atria and your left atria are squirting blood into your two um, ventricles. And so that means that these valves are going to be open at the same time. Okay, so your bicuspid and your tricuspid. Um, bicuspid and tricuspid. Okay, so the atria are here, they're squeezing the blood through down into your ventricle. When your ventricles contract, those close and the pulmonary and aortic valve open and blood comes out of your heart. Yeah? Make sense? Okay, so we start in the right atrium. Um, and the right atrium 
contract and pump the blood into number two, which is your right ventricle. Okay, the right ventricle. Your right ventricle contracts and pumps blood out through number three, which is your pulmonary arteries. Okay, blood goes out to your lung. Okay, that's number four. Okay, out to your lung on either side, your right and your left lung. Um, picks up oxygen and then comes back to the heart through number five, okay, which is your pulmonary vein. Okay, on either side of your heart. Okay, so pulmonary veins carry the blood back into number six, which is your left atria. Okay, the left atria contracts, squirts the blood into number seven, which is your left ventricle. It's just, it is squirting it, though. <laughs> okay, so that says left ventricle, sorry, ran out of room. Um, and then your left ventricle contracts and pushes the blood out through number eight, which is your aorta. Okay, and your aorta carries blood out to your body, okay, where it drops off the oxygen and picks up the carbon dioxide, so that's number nine, goes to the capillaries of your head and your chest and your neck and your abdomen and your lower limbs, okay. Um, and then blood comes back to the heart Back to the right atria through number 10, which should also be number 10 down here. Okay, through the superior, and superior vena cava. And down here, this is the inferior. Yeah. Okay, so here's what happens. Start in the right atrium, okay? Right atrium. Okay. Blood goes from the right atrium into the right ventricle. Right ventricle contracts, pushes the blood out through the pulmonary artery. It goes to the lung, picks up oxygen, comes back to the heart through the pulmonary vein into the left ventricle, which pumps blood into the, sorry, the left atrium into the left ventricle, which pumps blood into the aorta, which goes out to the body, okay, and then comes back to the heart through the superior and inferior vena cava, into the right atrium, into the right ventricle, out to the lungs, okay, back to the heart, out to the body, etc. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm.